the No Fade channel, checking in. On this episode of Dad's Home Gym, I'm going to go over the top three issues facing those of you looking to set up your home gym in today's climate, and I'm going to help you discuss ways on how to overcome them. And I'm going to be using this Perfect Sports Battle Rope as my primary example to show you how to get through and climb over those hurdles. If this is your first time to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. On this Dad's Home Gym series, I simply review a piece of gym equipment or discuss some pertinent gym topics to help you improve your home gym and more importantly, make sure that you are putting that home gym to use. So let's talk about today's climate. You know what's going on in the world. It is pandemonium out there. It is almost anarchy and it is almost impossible to find gym equipment and some of you don't want to go back to your local gyms and some of you want to just find that right piece of gym equipment for your home gym and it is absolutely insane it is frustrating so let's go over some of the issues now we're going to work backwards we're going to start with number three but first and i want to tell you right now the main the three main issues i'm going to discuss are not cost believe it or not I know so many of you are screaming that cost is a huge factor with regards to your home gym. And my only argument is yes, gym equipment specifically on if you want to get some of the more in-depth, elaborate pieces of equipment, machines, cardio equipment, etc., can be quite pricey. However, in a home gym environment, almost all of that equipment is going to last you a lifetime. And when you do finally get just get sick of it and want to sell it, get rid of it, it's probably going to hold up a substantial amount of its value. Unlike, say, a car purchase that after five or ten years is only going to be worth maybe 30% of the original price that you paid, a battle rope is probably going to be worth 50, if not more, uh, percent of the price that you paid, especially if you take care of it. And oftentimes in home gyms, uh, gym equipment just doesn't get nearly as much use as a local gym. So the stuff that you normally see break down and destroyed at a local gym is going to last you a lifetime in your home gym. Starting off at number three for issues with those of you looking to improve or just start building your home gym is availability. Any other year but 2020 and you would be easily able to find any piece of gym equipment, new, used, different versions, different iterations at bare bones prices with tons of coupons on top of it. But it's 2020 and almost everything is sold out and back ordered. There's no coupons anywhere to be found. And I don't even want to discuss the used market. I mean, people are charging more on the used market than if it was brand new. So how do you overcome that? And there are three ways to overcome this third issue. Number one is to just search and keep your head on a swivel for all of the websites. A few ways to do that so that stuff will get reported back to you and save you the typing on the keyboard. If any of the websites that you normally visit have notifications so that they can tell you when st uh, stock of what you're looking for comes in, set up notifications so you get emailed. Number two, if you go on Facebook, there are what's called bots that you can find those bots, sign up for notifications, and as soon as the website shows active, these bots send you like a Facebook messaging uh, instant message on your Facebook account. I think they have one for Titan Fitness, for Rogue, uh, for Rep Fitness, and there's a few others. I'll put photos of that up here so you can get an idea of, of, of what it's like. It takes a few steps. It takes a little bit of, you've got to message them and type in the help to find the command and then type in the specific items that you're looking for to be notified about. It is a little bit of a hassle, but it's worth it because you want to be uh, notified as soon as possible when that stuff comes in. And the third way to overcome the third issue isn't to simply wait it out. I don't even have any sense of an idea of when inventory is going to come back to normal or what it was before 2020 hit. To be fair, I thought it was going to be a lot better by the time that I'm shooting this video, and it's just not. It seems that even though lots and lots of gyms are open, so many people either fell in love with working out at home or are afraid to go back to their local gyms that they're sticking with those home gyms. I'm expecting inventory issues to stay very scarce until probably 2021. So how do you overcome that? Buy in advance. A lot of sites that I've been to and a lot of sites that I've purchased from are now taking what's known as back orders. Simply put, you pay for the product that you want and when it comes in, 
they ship it to you. And in fact, sometimes that does take a month, sometimes it takes two months, but the idea is if you know you want that barbell, battle rope, or anything, if you know that it's gonna be on back order, you put, the, you put your order in and then you at least know it's headed your way because as we know, a month isn't that long of a time. Now here is a bonus tip for those of you who are pulling your hair out of your head trying to find equipment. Now here is a bonus tip for those of you who are pulling your hair out of your head trying to find equipment that is actually in stock and that is to take off the blinders. So often we think of maybe five or six big retailers of gym equipment and those are the ones that we check first only to come up with nothing. Snake eyes, right? Stop me if you hear these names before. Amazon.com, Walmart.com, Rogue Fitness, Titan Fitness, Rep Fitness, again faster, right? You've checked those websites, they're out. What are you gonna do? And the truth is there are a number, and I, by a number, I mean hundreds of smaller companies that might not be represented on Amazon.com that still have inventory in stock and they've got good inventory at stock, ready to ship out at th on three day shipping, okay? And so I would definitely say, if you've checked all the major ones that you can think of, keep looking for the smaller companies that still have inventory. The second major issue is a big one, and that has to do with space or lack thereof. Now, I certainly feel lucky to have this um, small corner of my basement, even though I do have a limited ceiling. However, some of you are working out in your small garage, and even that is fairly lucky because I know there's a few of you, you know who you are, and I got a lot of respect for you getting it done in their bedroom, not the way that you're thinking. They've got their home gym in their bedroom. That's how tight they are for space on their home gym. And the truth is, space is always going to be a massive problem because we're never going to have enough. And we need to do a couple of steps in order to make sure that we're not just crying about the lack of space we have, but we're actually doing something about it. So first thing you need to do is make sure your layout is going to be as ideal as possible that you're utilizing all of the floor space you possibly can successfully you don't want to be disorganized and you certainly don't want to just be willy-nilly about it you want to have a game plan with that also with respect to floor space the best way to utilize that floor space is to build up now one of the things you can't see to your left my right i have a whole rack for my medicine balls slam balls and a few other gym accessories and I've got a whole uh, hook along the ceiling, again, taking up no floor space whatsoever for cabling that I have for, you know, the, the little bands, the little resistance bands that I happen to use. Now, underneath my basement stairs, I set up rods in order to hold all of my weighted vests. It's things like this that don't seem like much, but everything that you can do to use and be smart about the space you have is going to go a long, long way. Now, Another thing that you can do with respect to your space is to choose your equipment wisely. The la last thing you wanna do is really pick one piece of equipment that's going to work like one body part. You ideally wanna pick a piece of equipment that is gonna be multifunctional, that you can use a number of different times during the week on different body parts for different exercises and really make sure that you're getting the most bang for your buck. As a prime example, one of the tools that I love to use is my trap bar. I can use it for deadlifts, I can use it for shrugs, I can use it for bent over rows. You guys are getting the idea and that holds true for the battle rope. Now, if you're not familiar with the battle rope, I know most of you are. You've seen them doing, doing, with people doing MMA training. You've seen them with, with sports athletes doing training, slamming the heck out of them and I know I know you've seen The Rock. You've seen The Rock just going to town manhandling those things. And people know what they are, but they think there's only really one or two exercises you can do with them. And uh, there's like a hundred of them. If you, if you actually do some research online, and by no means am I an expert, uh, Profex Sports sends us a nice little uh, pamphlet on all the things that you can do with it. There are a number of ways to not only just slam the heck out of them, but to use them for abs, to use them to build muscle, to use them for cardio, a host of others. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna try to show you at least a handful, if not a dozen different exercises that I am gonna be doing with this battle rope. Now, when I talk about space, what happens with a lot of people 
they think they have less space than they really do because they've got their blinders on, they've, their head is in the box, and they're not thinking correctly. Oftentimes with a battle rope, people think, there's no way I'm gonna fit a battle rope in this small section of my basement. And that's because they're just not doing enough research and they're not thinking correctly. Now, what you don't realize is battle ropes come in different shapes and diameters. They come in, Profex Sports has everything, has three different, has three different diameters and three different lengths. And you can get every type of iteration of that. You can get one and a half inch diameter, two inch diameter, which is the one I have right here, and then two and a half inch diameter. Also, you can get those in 30 foot, 40 foot, and 50 foot. Now, I know what you're saying, right? 30 feet, I don't have that kind of room in my home gym. Divide that in half. When you actually set up your battle rope, it is actually gonna be divided in half. So that 20 foot rope is only gonna be 10 feet long once you actually set it up. Now, let's talk about how much space it takes up. It is a battle rope. People think it's gonna take up a ton, and I mean a ton of space. This is a two foot, 40, a, a two diameter, 40 foot battle rope. And look how small that, that is, okay? That's, and this is, when, when, you, when you even, and obviously this is cinched up because this is how it came, this is how it arrived to me. But when you're done using it, if you actually wind it up correctly, it's not gonna take up much more space than this. And because it is a rope, it can sit on top of anything else you wanna put it on. And because it's durable, you can stack other stuff on top of it. Now, a lot of people also, again, because they've got their head, they got their head up their keister or they've got their blinders on and they're just not willing to do the research, think that if they get a battle rope like this, they've got to have some construction crew come in to connect it. And that is the furthest thing from the truth. So Profex Sports sends these anchors. So if you already have a racking system, uh, similar to this one back here, but a little bit more heavy duty, if you've got a racking system of any sorts, you can just tie this to the base of the racking system and you are off to the battle rope races. Many people think that because this is a battle rope, it needs to be held down with just crazy amount of weight or anchored into the wall. And that's not true. It takes very little weight to actually keep this in place, believe it or not. If, with regards to my basement, I'm going to be using a 50 pound uh, dumbbell to just hold this massive battle rope down in the corner, which you're going to see towards the end of this video. But if you have a basement, you could actually just wrap this around your, your column in the middle of your basement that's holding up your basement and you are good to go. You don't need much weight. If you are a little handy and you are into construction, you can simply just screw into one of your studs, whether it's in your basement or whether it is in your garage or whether it's in your your big bedroom, if, you can, if, you, if, you, if you're excited enough about putting a battle rope in your bedroom um, and just simply put like an eye hook in there uh, and just run this through that eye hook. So there's a number of ways to set it up. And again, it's not gonna take up as much space as you actually think. It's probably gonna fit just fine in your home gym and you don't have to hold it down with a whole heck of a lot of weight. Before I help you tackle the number one problem with those of us looking to build out our home gym, I wanna give a little bit of detail with respect to this ProfectSports.com battle rope. As I mentioned, it comes in nine different versions. Um, I am a big fan of getting the thickest rope you think you can handle. Oftentimes, for many of us, we think we gotta go with the smaller rope, and that's simply not true in terms of thickness. Obviously, the thicker the rope, the heavier it is, you want to go with the thickest rope possible because eventually after a few weeks of manhandling this thing it's going to get a lot comfortable and you want to get something that's still going to challenge you also the thicker the rope the heavier it is so you can actually kind of ramp up to that heaviness by getting that thick rope whereas if you get the thinner rope um, it might just be too easy for you a couple months down the road in terms of size i'm a big fan of that 30 foot because it does help you save money and it's going to fit almost in any uh, home gym that you possibly have. So go with that two and a half diameter and go with the 30 foot, at least for me. Now, many people think uh, that they need to get the massive 50 foot one because they're beefy, they're, they're super strong. And if you're really, really strong, sure, go for it. But I think the reality is you, the two and a half diameter or even the just two diameter is gonna get heavy quick. And if you're doing it right, if you're doing the exercises correctly, you don't need that super, super long one because these things are gonna just tax your system like crazy. Let's talk about cost. Let's talk about profexsports.com. Now, 
This one right here costs $300. They range everywhere from $179 all the way up to like, like $350 or $379. And that's why, again, I'm a huge fan of getting the thickest rope with the shortest length because you can kind of get the best bang for your buck and bring that price point down. One of the things that Profex Sports battle ropes do really, really well is that these ends are actually rubberized for a nice good grip so that the rope doesn't sweat up your hands. And what you can, hopefully you can see in the video uh, in this camera here is that the actual rope is covered by a nylon layer of cloth. Why is that important? How do battle ropes go bad? Over the course of a lot, and I do mean a lot of use, the, the fabric of the rope on the inside after getting beaten against the floor wears away, it threads out, and it can become a bit of a hot mess over the long term. By having this thing covered, you're protecting the actual rope on the inside, and this nylon coating is going to take a lot more of a beating than the internal rope would if it was exposed. So uh, you're going to get the best of your both worlds, and it's got some great quality. Another thing with Profex Sports Battle Ropes, besides the fact that they're actually in stock, which is obviously a thumbs up, they give a 30-day return window. And one of the nice things about this, even though that price point seems high, it's free shipping. So that's one of the things I really hate with gym equipment because it is heavy. Oftentimes you go to check out and then you got to pay another hundred bucks for shipping. So you buy one of these, you get free shipping, three day shipping in the US, in the US of A, and you get that 30 day return policy and they have what's known as a hundred percent satisfaction guarantee. And that's nice to see because oftentimes with the cheaper companies, what happens is they sell it to you and they don't want to hear from you. Overall, is this an expensive rope? Anytime you have to pay $300 for anything, that's expensive. However, as I mentioned earlier in this video, when you get gym equipment, it is going to last you a lifetime. So even though $300 is going to be expensive, it's a one-time fee. And if you think about that over the course of two years, of three years, of 10 years of use of this battle rope, um, then I definitely think that that price point is fair because you're going to get your money's worth. And if by some chance in 10 years, you are sick of this battle rope, you moving, you're trying to lighten the load, you could probably sell this thing for 100 to 150 bucks easily after even 10 years of use so um, I definitely think there's a lot of value and as a dad and as a cheap dad I'm a big fan of value in the things that I buy and that's why when it comes to home gym equipment I do try to find those sweet spots with respect to performance and value for the products that I buy but I'm never ever afraid to buy really nice gym equipment because I know I'm gonna get my money's worth especially because I'm down here far too often far too many days of the week the number one problem that all of us have with respect to transitioning from a local gym to a home gym, myself included, is that it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. For years, we've been going to the local gym. We've been using the machines. We've probably been doing roughly the same workouts. And we have blinders on with respect to the exercises and the training programs that we are used to, that we're comfortable with, and I would probably say too comfortable with and then when you come into your home gym with limited equipment limited space you often have a limited imagination when you transition from your local gym to your home gym permanently you need to be flexible you need to be malleable you need to think outside of your local globo gym um, with respect to your training you need to look for alternative workouts that are going to fit the equipment that you have and you certainly certainly need to get outside your comfort zone. And if you have never, ever used a battle rope, or if you've only used a battle rope to slam it up and down, I am telling you right now, you need to think of the battle rope in a completely different light because there are so many other exercises and circuits and different types of training you can do with this battle rope um, and so many other pieces of equipment that we don't think about but can be put to extremely good use, not only for functional fitness but for bodybuilding, for looking good, for just feeling good and just for keeping that dad bod off. I know many of my subscribers uh, they're fighting that dad bod pretty hard alongside with me, and I am in your corner fighting along with you. So hopefully you found this video informative. I'm going to show you a number of exercises right now with respect to this ProfectSports.com battle rope.
profectsports.com is the website and they sell and have in stock right now more than just battle ropes so head over there and check them out if i can find a coupon code when i edit this video i'll throw it up here but regardless before you check out make sure you look for coupons yourself um, overall i'm a huge fan of battle ropes adding them to your home gym they oftentimes will fit in gyms that you don't think are meant for a battle rope but they're going to fit anyway and they offer a lot more versatility than many of you probably have given thought to. If you came this far in the video, do me a favor, drop a comment below. I want to know how much space are you working with in your home gym? Are you in your basement? Are you in your garage? Are you in your bedroom? Are you in a closet? Hell, are you outside on your front lawn trying to get it done? Drop where you're working out, how much square footage you have, and hey, anything else you want to add about your home gym, I am always love to hear about how people are just getting it done in the face of what is now known as 2020. As usual, thanks for watching and don't save anything for the trip back. I am dedicated to helping you be a great parent to your children and still accomplish your own personal goals. I provide ideas and insights to help you save time, money, and your sanity. Three things that are in short supply for every parent out there.